That is. Man, what was he thinking? But, you know. He, he didn't really have control over the names for Gossip Girl. Right. He already written characters in a book. And Chuck Bartowski is just so Chuck Bartowski. I mean, yes. I can't imagine him with another name. No, I can't either. I don't know. It, it would be weird. They were all asked things they would like to see. So I mentioned that Josh Gomez would like to see where Morgan lives. Uh, mm. Big Mike, so Mark Christopher would love to see him actually fishing. Oh, yeah. Um, and I can't remember what Vic and Scott said about the same thing, but they had some sort of something about it um, that, that was entertaining. Um, and Vic also had to kind of play up that he's Canadian when Damon had asked Yvonne what it was like being the only non-American or non-U.S. person on the cast. And they said, I'm not, I'm not American either. And I don't get coffee when I go back home <laughs> or something like that. Not remembering exactly, but there was some conversation about coffee at, at Starbucks in Canada and Vic not getting any more attention or getting some, but not enough. I see. Well, looking at the pictures from the panel, he looks so different than when he's on the show. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a very different sort of guy. And uh, I didn't, there wasn't any, any question about why Lester happens to be Jewish, but yeah. he is. Um, and I, I said something afterwards that I appreciated that he was Jewish, even though he doesn't look it, so that there is some Jew, sort of Jewish character on Chuck. Well, it sounds like it was quite an interesting evening, and it was must have been really cool to get to see everybody actually in person yes. up on stage. Yeah, it was. Um, it was lots of fun, and you can just sort of see how much they like working with each other. And I think part of the good thing about Paley in relation to the strike this year is that it gave everybody a chance to come back together and hang out after not having been shooting since December Uh each other again to sort of get ready for May when they start doing everything all over again. Well, that's really cool. And I think we're all just a little bit jealous that you got to see Zach and Yvonne and Adam and the whole crew, but thanks a lot for sharing it with us. Oh, it was no problem. Yeah. It was a nice thing to do because I was already there. For our listeners, we've got more information and a bunch of photos posted at checktv.net. And those people that are watching the enhanced podcast should have been seeing photos from the panel during this entire conversation with Roz. So we hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to bringing you more reports like this from, oh, I don't know, Comic-Con in July. So stay tuned for that. Awesome. Yes. And thanks again to Roz for, for reporting for us. No problem. Thanks. Thank you. So Mel and Liz, what do you think about that Paley Fest? It sounds like that panel was high energy and quite entertaining. I mean, to see Adam and Zach and Josh and Ryan McPartland, who doesn't really come across as quite a jokester on the show. Apparently in real life, he he does um, hold his own with our other um, entertainers up there. Apparently he and Joshua Gomez just tore the place up, just the two of them. Now, why do I not find that surprising? (laughs) (laughs) It it seems like you get any two of those in one room and you're going to have that happen. And and to have a panel like that, I mean, that was, how many people were actually on the panel? Something like 13 or 14. It was quite a crowd. I've never seen a panel quite that big before, so I'm sure it was a blast. Yeah. From everything that I read, too, it was it was the biggest hit out of everybody that was at Paley. All that anybody could talk about was the Chuck panel. Uh, again, doesn't surprise me very much. Well, no, but we might be a little bit biased. That's true. Anyway, we're going to move right along to listener emails. We actually have quite a few, of course, because it's been a few weeks since we put up the podcast. And wow, again, I, I got to say, I'm I'm so impressed with uh, where everybody's writing from. I mean, we we got an email from Argentina. We got one from Chile. We got from from Switzerland. We got one from France and literally all over the world, even places that Chuck isn't airing yet. Uh, we're getting emails from people listening to the podcast. So we definitely want to shout out to everybody who's who's sent in. And I, I if I miss your name, uh, we do appreciate your email. Um, but I think I, I've I think we were able to gather all the emails together. Uh, I want to say hi to Manuel from Argentina, uh, Buenos Aires. I've, I've, I've actually been to Buenos Aires before. Beautiful city. Um, but he's 20 years old. He's a huge fan of Chuck. He loves the show. And Manuel was asking if we could share our theories about the show or character story. Um, first of all, actually, he had a really good question. Um, do we think that we'll get to know more about Jill? Jill, of course, being 
the girlfriend of Chuck's who Bryce stole away from him. What do you guys think about Jill? Well, I hope we do get to see her again because she sounds like a, an intriguing character if she's kept if she had kept uh, Chuck's fancy for so long after they actually broke up, she must have been really something. Yeah, and my and my thinking is that they give a lot of references to Jill, like in a lot of episodes, and I think there's too many references for them not to address that character. Mm, true. Maybe we never meet Jill, but I'm sure we're gonna gonna get to know more about Jill. Mm-hmm. Do you think maybe Jill was involved with um, the CIA or something? Well, I think it's quite possible, and I I think it. It looks like they were keeping tabs on Chuck even before Bryce met him because his file went back quite a way. So, mm, good point. Uh, it could very well be. Maybe she was even an earlier operative. Yeah. So that that was a very good question. He also asked about uh, whether we're going to be hearing more about Harry Tang. I sure hope so. I think that was a great character. He was an awesome character. But, you know, he's on the beach in Hawaii drinking pina coladas now. So does he even want to come back to the Buy More? I don't know. It'd be fun to have an episode where, you know, the... Uh, Chuck team has to go there and they meet up with him somehow. That would be funny. Oh, yeah. And wasn't his cover story uh, when they got him out that they were taking him for training or something? Yeah. With the Or that he was he was being recruited to be an agent. And, you know, who knows how far they took that story, but he could certainly um, foul up some actual spy mission if he thought he was a, an operative. Yeah, that actually has has the trimmings for a pretty good Chuck episode. Yeah, it really does. Um, and another question he asked was, when we'll be seeing new episodes again? I know they'll be sometime in September, but uh, I, I heard that actually Heroes is starting the first week of September. Wow, that's early. It's quite possible that because uh, a lot of TV shows were in a situation where they could either really scramble to get some new episodes out uh, in the existing season after the strike, or they were just going to scrap things and get started early on the next season. So so we have a, a very unique situation now where a lot of shows like Heroes and Chuck have an earlier start to their writing, which means an earlier start to their shooting, which could indeed mean that they have an earlier start to their, their season. Uh, we don't know for sure. Uh, do you guys have any more information about that? All we've heard is that um, there won't be any more episodes for season one, but season two has been picked up. And, and like we said earlier, they begin filming the, the pilot episode for season two in May. So other than that, your guess is as good as ours. Yeah. Though NBC Heroes, NBC Chuck could mean if they share some of the same strategy, who knows? Sooner the better. That's our point. Sooner the better. Another question actually was addressed by quite a few people, uh, mentioned by Jorge Saldana from Chile as well, asking about whether we're going to hear uh, Chuck's music either in iTunes or, or somewhere else. And in particular, Manuel was asking if we could name the tracks uh, for people to know how to get them. Now, I, I know I've seen on ChuckTV.net before that you guys were uh, had something on there about which songs came up in the episodes. Right. Those are the songs that they source from other... Um, artists, not the instrumental tracks that um, Tim and his crew create for the episodes. So if if you mean the actual uh, lyrical tracks, then we do have lists of those at checktv.net. But the instrumental stuff, I don't know. I actually heard from Tim Jones, the music composer from Chuck, and he, he said it's not likely that they'll put out any of the soundtrack incidental music, though it's not impossible. And definitely, if you want to write into NBC and request it, there's, uh, I mean, basically, they're, they're in the money business. If they, if they think that there's an audience for it, it's quite possible that they could release it. At this point, there hasn't been enough interest shown, but that could change. So uh, by all means, contact NBC and let them know that you're interested. I love the music. I think Tim does an amazing job. He does. Hey, I'd buy it. Yeah. And if you would, too, maybe it'll happen. But moving right along, uh, Liz, you uh, wanted to read an email from Alec Towns. Yes, Alec, um, he would like to know, he says, at the end of Chuck versus the Marlin, it is said something like, more Chuck coming soon. Does that mean he wants to know um, if uh, we'll be seeing a few more episodes for this season? And, of course, we know that's Ixnade. Um, he also says, I remember reading that Chuck was filmed in a CompUSA for the Buy More. So with CompUSA closing down, does that mean we could see a change in the set for the Buy More? 
I don't think we'll see a set change because I believe what happened was they used CompUSA as a stand-in for the Buy More in the pilot episode. And then once the show got picked up, they actually built their own set on a soundstage rather than, you know, kind of outsourcing. So I think, you know, the Buy More that we'll see in season two will be the one we've grown to know and love in season one. Yeah, I would I would agree. Especially big network shows like this, they they always build sets for these kinds of things. So uh, I I doubt. I mean, may, maybe they use exteriors from the CompUSA, which they could do exteriors really anywhere. Just throw up a sign. Mm-hmm. So I I don't think it's going to change a whole lot. I doubt it. And Jorge Saldana from Chile. I, I've actually been to Chile as well to Santiago. I uh, want to shout out to Jorge. He wanted to ask about the CD from the show, but he also mentioned that both Liz and Mel are pretty. As Aww, we know. thanks. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Horace. Hey, Horace. You know what? I wanted to also mention that that picture that you see whenever you pull up the podcast, yeah, that's pretty much how I look all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, she she looks like that Andy Warhol um, colored look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With the constant perpetual look of terror on my face. <laughs> Ah, the lol. I forgot to mention that Manuel said that gray is pretty. Sorry, Liz. Yes. Oh, gray. You got your first pretty. <laughs> I got my first pretty comment. <laughs> Don't have to go too far on that one. And Mel has a message from Switzerland. That's right. Martina from Switzerland emailed in and said, Hi, Gray, Mel, and Liz. You're all very, very pretty. So we got oh, two cool. berries on that one. <laughs> She said, I've accepted your briefing, and this is from our last podcast, and I'm hereby sending in my Czech versus Switzerland banner. I hope you've received a lot of other mail with graphics to show in the Enhanced podcast. I love that feature, by the way. It adds a special note to the podcast, and I can look at all the pretty pics while listening to you guys on my way to the office. I've also noticed the little iPod your nerd herder is carrying in the header pic. So cute. Which I agree, that was a little touch added by our very own Gray, and I think it's adorable. It is cute. But as far as uh, Martina, your your banner that you sent in, I did receive it, but I have to apologize. While we were getting our material together to uh, about what we wanted to talk about on this podcast, I realized that I we never posted it at checktv.net, and that's my fault. It's been this last month has been Mel versus the research paper, and the research paper is winning. So I <laughs> I have a backlog of emails that I need to, of things that I've kind of set aside to get taken care of eventually but that research paper is due tomorrow so hopefully sometime this week i will be getting through that backlog of email and that will include getting your banner posted because it was very nice um and also just a reminder to everyone to go ahead and send in your graphics of uh, you know the czech versus switzerland can't be alone we need czech versus i don't know argentina um chile we know you people are out there and you're listening so come on send us your graphics yeah so moving right along to other emails, BR wants to hear more interviews with behind-the-scenes people, like the costume designer. I think that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. We'll work on that. Yeah, we'll do our best. Um, and actually, if anybody who's listening has any connections with people who work on Chuck or act in Chuck, feel free to tap their shoulders for us and let them know we're interested. Um, we're doing our best on, on our side, but having all sides contributing could help. Um, Océane Rémy from France uh, wrote in to 